This is the very latest Cormate T28. Now, Cormate are a fantastic brand that are best known for their really driver-focused boat. And its predecessor to this, the T27, was one of the most entertaining boats I've ever driven. So I am really looking forward to this. Now what you need to know about it is it's got a very deep V hull, I think it's about 25, 26 degrees dead rise right at the transom, so it's really sharp. It is powered by a Mercury 350 horsepower 6.2 litre V8 engine and it is set up absolutely to be a driver's boat. So you can see here I've got proper racing throttles with a separate gear, gear lever here, forward and reverse, and then the throttle itself. We've got the trim on the throttle here as well as balance trim here and the trim tabs up and down here. The wheel comes a long way forward right towards you and the, th the, the throttle is right there exactly where you need it. Really good secure seats you can see properly wedged in there. It's a bolster seat so I can sit right down and wedge myself in right below the windscreen. I prefer to drive it standing up because you just feel a little bit more in control and I like an uninterrupted view over this windscreen. But let's show you what it's capable of because it really is something. And once we're in gear, we've then just got the throttle to worry about. We'll line everything up. We'll keep the trim well down to start with. Got all the trim tabs up because this is a really sensitive boat. Because of that deep V, just a tiny bit of steering input makes a big difference and you've got to get the trim absolutely right. So here we go. Let's put the power on. Ease it up, not too fast to start with. Good torquey V8 engine, nice and low in the hull. It takes a little bit to get going because of that deep V, you haven't got such a big planing surface. But then as we put on the more power, now we're already doing 25 knots at this speed. We're doing three and a half thousand RPM, doing a 28 knots. It's going to ease the trim up a little bit just take it up to 30 knots. First of all, I just want to show you how sensitive it is on the steering. So just a quarter of a turn of lock and it banks straight into a turn. Straighten it up, quarter of a turn the other way and straight back. And it is really, really quick to respond. And it just feels so grippy and so secure. Put in a tighter turn. I'm going to turn to port this time. And it just tracks right round so well just feels fantastic I'm gonna put a bit more speed on now you can hear the noise of that V8 it just sounds so good so I trimmed it back in for the turn now I'm trimming it up again now we're doing 38 knots effortlessly let's go all the way got 4900 rpm Just lifting it up and it's absolutely skipping along on that hull now. 46, 46 knots, just feels fantastic. So the other advantage about having a really nice smooth running hull is that it's actually pretty efficient at lower speeds. So now we're doing 27 knots, we're burning 38 litres an hour. So it's not a great deal more than a litre per mile, which on a really quick boat like that is pretty impressive. But it kind of needs to be running at about this speed to really feel good. Any slower than that, it feels like it starts to drag a little bit, but let's ease it back a bit. Okay, so now we're doing 25 knots, just over 3,100 RPM and 33 litres an hour. So you're not really saving much on fuel. It actually feels better when it's running a bit quicker. So put through a turn. Let's wind it up again a little bit. Just get that balance right. Down again, 
truck run. Nice and tight. You know what? That has lost none of its magic. Just like the predecessor, the T27, it is an absolute minter of a driver's boat. You've got such control, such speed, but it's just the adjustability of it. You need to know what you're doing a bit. It's not one of those boats you can just jump in and go hell for leather. You've really got to work it. You've got to get the balance right. You've got to get the trim right. But when you do get it right, it's so rewarding. It just takes off. You can feel it sort of lifting up on the water. The water drops away. It starts to plane efficiently. It rises right up on the surface, and it just skips along. And then the slightest bit of steering, it just dives in one way, then the other. But it doesn't feel flighty. It doesn't feel like it's going to lose grip. And when it hits a bit of a wave, it just flies straight and true and tracks straight through it. Honestly, I wondered if I was slightly imagining or getting a bit nostalgic about how good the old T27 was, but no, the old magic is very much still there. So starting at the back of the boat, there is a nice sort of semi-circular curved bathing platform here. We've got the sunbed here, in this particular configuration, we've got it set up to be an aft viewing platform. Uh, obviously lovely at anchor, or indeed if you've got some water sports or water skiing underway, it does mean somebody can sit facing aft. You've got a, a, a plug-in hole here for the water sports pole, which you can actually tie the towing line onto. And then this backrest here swings over so that you've actually got a full length sunbed here too. So you have got absolutely a full length sun pad too. Now one of the big differences of the T28 over the T27 is the extra width. You've got an extra foot of length, but you've also got a much wider seat here, which makes a big difference. You've got room for three people to sit along this aft bench, and then you've got another bench facing towards that. There is a slot in table that goes in here. You can see that slots into the base there. And then you have a really nice dining station here with a table between you facing each other across the table. Lots of lovely teak all the way around. You can see teak cappings here. We've got the fuel station here. We've got the uh, black water tank there. And even that little step up onto these walk around side decks. Really nicely done. We've got bits of storage under here. And then under this seat, we've actually got a fridge. So you can see we've got a basket with the water in, and then we've got more storage under there. Again, just very neatly done. So there's no having to sort of pop off cushions or anything. It's all just part of one single unit. More storage on this side, useful little lockers. And the other thing that I really like the way they do is having these dedicated fender stowage places. So there's one either side at the stern and one either side at the front. And it just means there's always somewhere to stow the fenders. Now we've got full walk around decks. So I'll show that in a minute. You can see we've got the speakers set into the cockpit combings here. And then this lovely wrap around screen. Now this is a proper glass screen. I think on the previous version, it was acrylic. Again, just makes it higher quality, more robust, better clarity and so on in the glass itself. We've got a bit of a storage unit down here. You can see there's the handle for the manual pump as well as a locker there. And then the helm station itself with these two twin seats, really good secure seats. We've got bolsters so you can stand and that's exactly where it should be right behind your thighs but equally you can fold that down and then really good secure bolsters either side that keeps you wedged into place. Really nice, neat screen layout. We've already talked about the wheel coming right out into your chest. We've just got the single 
SIMRAD screen. You can obviously set that up how you want, whether you want uh, the, all the sort of engine speeds and controls down the right hand side and then a chart in the middle, however you want to do it. And then this lovely row of toggle switches down here. Got the wipers here, so we've got this one wiper that will keep the, the screen clear and we've got the anchor up down on the left side and then all you've got the lights and bilge pumps down here. We've talked a little bit about the throttle, got the racing style throttle with the, th the throttle on the right and the gears on the left. We've got trim, side to side trim and front and back trim and then there is also a bow thruster here just to keep that bow in check when you're coming into the berth. Very smart layout, we've got this nice mahogany finish around the helm station itself, a couple of cup holders and then the grab rail all around here. Rather attractive built-in steaming light up on the windscreen itself and then these walk around decks meaning make it very easy to walk around. There are a couple of sun pad cushions here so you've got a nice sunbathing area and another neat little feature they've added is solar panels. So this black square here is a solar panel. That's not gonna give you a huge amount of power, but what it will do is make sure that your battery stays topped up. So if you keep it on a swing mooring or you stay the night at anchor, it should just mean that your battery will also stay topped up. You can see we've got more speakers built in here. And these are these extra stowage points for the forward fenders. And then a lovely anchor locker up here. The anchor itself is on the electric windlass and you can see it is a through hull anchor that runs right through the bow there with just the rope. Doesn't look like we've got any chain on this, we've just got a, a rope road on here. But you can see that stays neatly in there and then a couple of cleats up here with a walkthrough bow. Very uh, Scandinavian style thing this having a walkthrough bow because what they often like to do is more uh, bow in to a sort of rocky island and then have a stern anchor out the back and it just means you can walk straight through the bow. But really nice practical walk around layout. Very stylish with all these teak decks. But most of all, it's about the driving experience. But it's not a completely open boat. There is also a quite a useful cabin down here. So if you're able to come around, I can show you the cabin too. You can see that's got a slide across mahogany door here, with that lovely grain there, but that slides under the helm. And then there is quite a useful little cabin down here. We've got a few bags down here at the moment, but you can see that there is the bed section up here. This, these are the sun pad cushions for that bow area, but useful bed area here, double berth, nicely padded all the way around. And then either side of me here, we've got a storage area down there, a smart little sink, got a couple of cup holders for your toothbrushes and so on over on this side. And over here, we've got more storage, but rather more surprisingly, there's actually a little toilet under there. So all the essentials for overnighting. It's not meant to be a big capacious liverboard cruiser but you know what for a weekend away or something it's got everything you need and actually under the cabin here but there is actually a special storage space for that cockpit table that i mentioned so again it's just one of those boats that feels like it's been really well thought through it's not just a pure performance machine it's also a surprisingly usable weekender